Now in this video, we're going to talk about capacitors. Now for the purposes of the MCAT, we only need to really be aware of one type of capacitor. That's called a parallel plate capacitor. So let's imagine that we've got two plates, one like this and one like this. And the plates are separated by some distance, so they're not touching each other. And what happens is we attach the plates to a battery. All right, so this is a circuit. Now let's draw the battery. We attach the plates to some kind of a battery, let's say. And what happens is that charge accumulates on opposite sides of the plates. So on one side, we have a lot of negative charge accumulating. And on the other side, we have got a lot of positive charge accumulating. Right, and so what happens is we essentially have stored a difference in charge where this plate is very positively charged and this plate is very negatively charged. And so what is the purpose or what is the function exactly of this storage of charge? Well, the answer is that it's effectively it's a storage of energy. It's a storage of potential energy. This charge, these charges, if we allow them to, to jump across, then uh, they'll create energy. They'll, they'll create electrical energy. So effectively, this is a potential energy that we can harness or we can use. And capacitors are especially useful in a situation where we need to discharge a lot or we need a lot of energy very quickly. And so one example for, uh, one good example is, one example is a camera flash. So a camera flash uses a capacitor to charge the flash because it's a lot of energy. And so after you take a picture, uh, you'll see that the camera's flash is unavailable for a period because the capacitor is recharging. And so as in one example um, is this. Now, how do we measure, uh, what are the factors that affect uh, the ability of a capacitor to store charge? Uh, the, ability to, the ability of a capacitor to store charge is also known as its capacitance. Capacitance. And we write it as C. Uh, the variable is C. So what are some factors that affect its capacitance? Well, generally speaking, there are three. Uh, there are three, and there we can put them in a formula, in, in an equation, but we just need to understand them conceptually for the MCAT. First of all, it's the area of the plates. And you can guess that as the area of the... So let's uh, draw one plate. Right? As the area of the plate increases, the plates increases, capacitance also increases. So if we, draw, if we were to write a formula, let's write the formula over here. Capacitance equals, and so we know that area is going to be one of our variables. Now, what's another, what's another variable? Well, another variable is the distance. D, the distance between our capacitor plates. So, for example, if, the, if our capacitor plates are like this versus our capacitor plates are like this, which one is going to store more energy? Well, it turns out that when the plates are closer together, they store more energy, so, or they can store more charge. And that has to do with, if the plates are in infinitely far apart, then uh, there's no, there's, uh, there's basically no ability to store charge, whereas if they're very close together, what's going to happen is the reason why we have a charge accumulating here and here is because effectively these charges are repelling each other, and so we get charges accumulating, uh, and so that also uh, increases our ability to store charge. And we can also understand this variable because if we were to put our plates basically touching, then they would effectively, they would store an infinite amount of charge, which is to say we would, we would have created a short circuit. So this charge could keep flowing between them. So it could keep, could keep flowing. And so uh, this is the second variable. So the second variable is distance. And we see that distance is inversely related. That is to say, as distance increases, capacitance decreases. And so when we do the equation over here, we put distance on the bottom of our fraction. And uh, that's very clear. That's fairly clear. So those are the two variables as far as the distance and the area. And the last variable that we should be aware of for the purposes of the MCAT, and this is really just, uh, just be very conceptually very aware of it, uh, is the concept of a dielectric. A dielectric, a dielectric constant is a, a constant for a given material. And generally speaking, uh, capacitors... So the two parallel plates of a capacitor will have some sort of material in between. So let's uh, change the color on that. So have some sort of material in between. So that material could be, for example, it could just be air, or it could be something else. And so air has a given 
dielectric constant. Other materials have their own dielectric constants. And so the dielectric constant also gives us an indication of uh, the capacitance of a capacitor. And so the dielectric constant would also be on top of, let me redraw it like that, would also be on the top of the equation because it is directly related to capacitance. And so essentially this is a constant for a given material. And as it increases, capacitance also increases. One last thing we should be aware of for capacitors is the concept, let's scroll down a little bit, that to figure out the equivalent capacitance of a, of a circuit, we should be aware of uh, that, that capacitance functions inversely to resistance. So we remember that when we have, so let me draw a battery, when we have two resistors in series, Sorry, that's kind of a weird resistor, weird looking resistor. Let me fix that a little bit. We have two resistors in series. We know that res equivalent resistance equals R1 plus R2, etc. Right? And we know that when we have two, two resistors in parallel, equivalent resistance equals 1 over R1, sorry, 1 over equivalent resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. It turns out that capacitance is the opposite way around. It turns out that with capacitance, when we have two capacitors, in series, then equivalent capacitance of the circuit is equal to one, sorry, again, one over equivalent capacitance. It's equal to one over C1 plus one over C2, etc. And it turns out that when the capacitors are connected in parallel, then it is the opposite way around. Uh, so, again, two capacitors connected in parallel. turns out that for two capacitors connected in parallel, CEQ equals C1 plus C2, etc. So for example, if we were to add a second capacitor in series, the same capacitor, then capacitance would decrease by half, would go half. Um, and so these two are the same mathematically, and these two are the same mathematically. And just be aware of that. Uh, that. That is the last thing, really, that we should be aware of as far as capacitors. And that's all we really need to know for capacitors for the MCAT. This is not a very high yield or highly tested concept, but it's useful to at least have some awareness conceptually and uh, very, very generally of some of the factors that affect capacitors.